code folds are extremely underutilized. IDEs do a really bad job at making them useful, but my beautiful little NeoVim is highly customizable, so we can actually configure and use folds to be a productivity boost. So let's go over how I have this set up. There's a plugin called NVim Origami. And this plugin creates folds for you based on the LSP and tree sitter. It makes H and L keys also open and close folds. It opens the folds while searching and closes them when finished. And it also adds some visual customization options. Origami is a great plugin. For my setup, I've also taken folds a little bit further. One annoying thing is when you load up a file and then your LSP loads, then Vim auto folds everything. This feels like getting a door slammed in your face, but it's pretty easy to fix using these two lines here. The NVim Origami docs actually suggest this as well. Origami has H and L opening and closing the folds, but I have also added a key map to toggle the fold using the return key, uh, which is CR or the carriage return. There's a bunch of Vim commands for folds under the Z prefix, like you can see here, ZA. However, using H, L, and return are more comfortable for me, so I've made some shortcuts. I have a couple more key maps, but they require some setup, so we will get to those at the end of the video. Next, what would be nice is some visual indicators for these folds. We can enable the fold column, as you can see all the way on the way left. However, I don't like the look of this, and there is a decent amount of work to get it to where I do like it. The one thing we could do is put these fill cars to have some different indicators for open, close, and then this fold separator is that vertical bar. So that changes the appearance of that column a little bit. But another thing I would prefer is to have it be on the right of the numbers instead of the left. So to do that, we could use this status column and set it so that the line numbers appear first and then the fold column so now our fold column is on the right but there are these numbers here that are indicating the fold level and as far as i'm aware there's not a fill car or any way to disable this so instead the strategy would be to redraw this status column yourself without using the fold column and if you would like there is a plugin that does that for us Using this plugin statuscall.envim, you can configure it so that there is none of those numbers for the fold level. So this looks pretty clean and pretty minimal. But those numbers do represent where you are in the fold level, so they are kind of useful to know what is going to close when you close a fold. While this right here could maybe be the final evolution for you if you're happy with it, for me, I wanted the corresponding code fold indicator, the, the chevron icon, I wanted that to highlight just like how the line number is highlighted. So instead of this plugin, I set up the vanilla status column myself. I'm not going to get super into the specifics of the code, but basically we will make the status column use a string that we have set with the line numbers. If the row we are drawing is the start of a code fold, we will have an icon that indicates the fold being open or closed, and we will highlight it if the cursor is currently in that fold. The vanilla API is pretty limited and it makes implementing this a challenge. Thankfully, we can get the code fold ranges from the LSP and use that for our calculations. It's important to note that the status column will be re-rendered a bunch of times, so the code should be performant. It would be bad to retrieve the ranges from the LSP on every line draw, so we should implement caching for quick retrieval. So one way to implement caching like this in Lua is to create a module file, and Lua is cool because the modules keep their state and share it wherever they're used. Here's my fold range cache file. You can find this code in a GitHub gist link in the description. Now with this, we have quick access to these fold ranges and also the fold range corresponding to our cursor location. Now to update the fold ranges, we will use auto commands. We will get and save the ranges from the LSP whenever the LSP loads or when changes are made in the file because folds might change. 
we will get and save the current fold range whenever our cursor moves, specifically row changes. And then when we close a buffer, we can clear the cached ranges for that buffer. With that, the fold ranges information is being saved and we can have our status column render how we want it and it will highlight the code fold we're in. It's not the most simple operation, but it's not too bad. I'm sure my code could be improved and there's a few issues with the highlighting, but I'm happy with it. So this is how I'm leaving it. The issue with the highlighting is that sometimes the icon doesn't get highlighted and sometimes it sticks. And this is only this only happens very rarely and I'm not entirely sure what it is. I'm fine with it. It's just a minor visual issue. I'm not going to spend any more time on it. And the last thing is two more key maps for navigation. I'm using these double bracket commands to jump back and forth between code folds. And it's kind of interesting because Vim has this ZJ command and that will jump to the, the start of the next code fold. But there isn't a command to jump to the start of the previous code fold. There is one to jump between the end of the previous code fold, but not the start. So I built a method that does this. So there we go. Now we've configured NeoVim to have this origami plugin to automatically create folds for us. We can easily close and open the folds. We can jump between the folds and we have some nice visual indicators of the fold as well. So that's going to be it for the video. If you've been sleeping on code folds, hopefully you give it a chance and you enjoy using them. Thanks for watching.